Okay guys, welcome back to Zero to Fight Stick. In this episode, we're going to talk about preparing some wiring. Now, this is a totally optional thing. I know you probably, if you've been looking at fight sticks and people's pictures on Reddit, you know that a lot of them do cool cable wrap with this stuff right here, something like this. Uh, this is just generic PET braided sleeving. We're going to use it to make a mess like this a little bit more manageable, a little bit prettier. Again, this is totally optional. You could just take this harness, um, pretty up how do you want. You know, if you want to add more zip ties or whatnot, you can just then plug it into your board, then connect it, and you're set to go. However, I think that's boring. Uh, we should make it a little bit nicer because we have that nice plexiglass bottom. I want people to look at that and say, ooh, that looks cool. And again, I like to overcomplicate things. So what are you gonna need? Well, some scissors toenail clippers for especially when we're dealing with little tiny zip ties these actually work pretty well for getting in there and cutting those off for when we don't need them uh, various wiring harnesses this is a standard 20 pin that was from uh, arcade shock and i believe focus attack and other places have these as well uh, this is a l3 r3 touchpad button harness from Arcade Shock. This is the uh, directional pad, left stick, right stick selector cable from AFS, allfightsticks.com. We'll also want this big guy as a heat gun because we need to put on some heat shrink. And this is just a generic kit I got from Amazon that. Some of them have adhesive built in, so when you heat it up, it will create a better seal. It's more waterproof. Obviously, I'm not using this in a marine environment or anything, but I just thought it was cool. And our good friend, the blowtorch. We'll also need this guy. Well, why would you need a plastic straw? Well, it will make the sleeving process much easier. When I first did one of these wires, it took me, felt like two hours. Uh, by the end of it, I was doing wire sleeving in about 10 minutes. So definitely the first couple times might take a little frustration, a little patience, a lot of patience, uh, but you can get it. And hopefully this video is going to show you how. So I'm going to get set up and I'll show you the straw trick, which is really helpful for making the time requirement go way down. And uh, see you in a second. go over a few things, tips and hints about working with this PT. This is a quarter inch to, uh, sleeving or cable wrap. Uh, when you try and push it on, it's you're going to be tempted to take it from the top and just yank it. That isn't going to work. What you want to do is push it from the bottom and you'll notice it bunches up. Once you do that, just kind of let it go and you'll notice it move forward. So push it in, bunch it up, and let it slide up. This will move it up your cable. It is kind of a slow process at times, but just keep going at it and you'll find it's pretty easy. Um, another thing is, when you cut the end of this, it's going to fray, it's going to be terrible. So let's give you an example. I'm gonna cut this. Right now it looks okay, but once you start poking at it, it comes. it's starting to come right apart and this will leave fraying everywhere and get you know it's pretty messy so you can see like that it's already kind of coming apart so to prevent that once you cut it don't touch it break out your torch or hot knife if you just cut it with a hot knife you're saving yourself a step I don't really have that if you don't have one of these little blow torches they're great but you can of course you can just use a lighter so we just want to tr turn that on Give it a little bit of a touch. Blow the smoke away. Don't breathe that stuff, right? And then you'll notice those are not going to fray anymore. It will be a little warm for a minute. Um, you can use a simple big stick pen. Get it in there and start winding it up because these do tend to stick together, but they won't fray everywhere and get everywhere and leave you a mess. So just note that as we go into sleeving these wires. All 
right, let's let's do a demo. You can do much of this process with the rest of your wires, and I'll point out some various uh, kind of gotchas and things like that. We want to take the end. We burned this off earlier, and we want to measure not from like right here or something, because then we can't see our wires. We can't see what you know goes to what, just in case. Just give it about a quarter of an inch right there, and then we just start measuring. Now this is the deep directional pad left stick right stick selector cable from all fight six once again and it's pretty long but it's not as hard to do as some of the others and again once we reach that end we want to leave a little bit of leeway this is connecting to one switch so we don't need a whole lot but we need enough now the good news is with this PET sleeving you can cut it a little long and then bunch it up um, but if possible we want to make it fairly accurate so let's cut it about here there we go and once again we want to burn that end and then now we have a length to work with all right so here's where the straw comes into play so we're going to take that straw and the problem is Getting this to fit on the end here is not going to work. This is pretty small. Uh, I got quarter inch tubing. If you get larger tubing, it might. And trying to fit this into here is a pain. You don't want to do it. So what I do, take one lead at a time, push them into this straw. Actually, let me use the shorter one. What that's going to do, of course, is going to cover those up. We don't want to knock, push those through all the way yet. Then what we want to do, I'm going to use the end of my toenail clipper. Usually, like I said, you can use the end of a pen to get in there and kind of expand this. And don't worry about kind of breaking it up a bit. It's going to be fine. We just want to widen that up. And of course, before I forget, because this will happen, I, you always seem to get one wire, you just go, oh, duh, I forgot. Let's leave that there. She wants some heat shrink. We need a cap for one end to lock that down. I'm going to use, well, this in this set, I'll have a link in the blog post. I'm going to use the second largest here. That's the one that seems to fit the easiest for me. First, I cut this in half. Set that one half aside, take the other half, cut that in half. And this seems to provide a pretty good length. Of course, I screwed this up, so let's go and backtrack. Put, slide them one at a time through. It works pretty well. Make sure you get the little plastic covering sleeve to go through as well. Now, as you add wires, this will get more complicated, but do what you can. This one's not too bad. And if you find you've got a big cable harness that you're working with, and this size isn't working, you can always go up a size. Uh, it may not fit quite as well, but it'll do. All right, so now we have our end cap on. We can just let that slide for now. And let's put our quick connects back in the straw. Beautiful. Okay. Now that they're in, and I just use a novelty straw from an amusement park drink we got or something like that. Let's take our end here and kind of work it over. The first little bit, you want to kind of twist and push. Probably should have gone from the other end because this has ribbing. But we'll make do. What you want to do is kind of push from the bottom, like I mentioned earlier. And if you screw it on, it, it works 
fairly well. Just make sure it's going to go on your wires there. Don't want any loose ones that make them manually push through. That's no fun at all. What you want to do is just work this past the straw, pull it up and slide it down to here. Remember, just keep kind of bunching it up from the back end. Let it slide up, you'll be fine. You can keep twisting as well, that seems to help. Uh, I feel like I should have made a slightly longer piece of straw here. You don't want a super long one, but you don't want a super short one. It's going. It's just slow. Take. You're going to need a lot of patience for this build. I'll see you in a minute. mentioned the ballpoint pen trick and I didn't get to show it earlier uh, when you after you burn your cord wrap here uh, sometimes the ends can stick together at least they won't fray everywhere but they will tend to stick so what you want to do is just take a cheap ballpoint pen here and work it in a little bit and that should break it up and then you can start using your finger to uh, make it a little wider and workable do that on both ends. Sometimes it might take a couple tries. But there you go. So now it's ready to go. It's not fraying. It is a little spread apart and that'll be covered by the heat trick. Alright, welcome back. Now, we've got our sleeve on. I think I made it a little short to be honest, but we'll go with it. Next step is to heat shrink this edge here otherwise it kind of frays even though we melted it a bit it's still gonna be a little bit messy so we want to slide about half of that on and then again we want to leave a little bit of wiring exposed so we can see okay that was my black that was my red etc once we've got that in position all we want to do take our trusty heat gun and fire that up it does not take long this is a tack life works pretty well you don't need the full-size heat gun but if you have that you can use it I'm just gonna apply a little hot air and that'll warm up the heat shrink and well make it shrink make sure you cover every edge and a little bit more treatment Turn this off. If your gun has a stand, make sure you're using that. You don't want anything to catch on fire, that's no fun. And there we go. There's one end done. All you have to do, pretty much repeat the process on the other. heat shrink. Now I did make it a little short. I don't think I measured it right or I just stretched it out. But the nice thing about this stuff is it is kind of flexible so we're just gonna squeeze it on up there. Here's about the length I want so that's good. The tricky part is just holding it in place and not burning our fingers. So I'll fire this up. Watch for that heat shrink to curl in. All right. 
more set there. Let's be careful putting that away because it's still warm. <sighs> and look at that. We have a nice wrapped cable ready to go. Another thing you can do, just for identification purposes, is if you have some colored zip ties, let's say I want to make this a neon yellow green kind of thing. Put one of these on the end. Then I can make a, you know, write down a legend or something that says, oh, hey dummy, this is what this cable's for. Clip it with the toenail clipper. If you have cat nail clippers, those actually work pretty well too. There's also formal, like, side clippers that work, but hey, these are cheap. Those other clippers, kind of expensive, so why not? Scissors can work, but they're testier. It's not as maneuverable. Toenail clipper works just great. Alright. Now we know, oh yeah, that green yellow neon cable is all set to go. Alright, let's talk about some other cables. I'm not going to go into sleeving, but I will give you hints. You have this big mess, which is the 20 pin. It's the main connector for your buttons. Um, first of all, they're kind of in bundles, so if you separate them out. First one right here, this is going to be your joystick connector. Now, depending on your joystick, you might need an adapter. This will fit standard Sanwa, and I believe some Mitso. Um, the way you fit it on, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Sanwa fits on one way and some Mitso fits the other, might be vice versa. Um, it is possible to sleeve this. However, you'd have to remove either the cables at the bottom of the base or at the connector here. I don't feel confident enough doing it. I feel like I'll ruin the pins and, and that's a mess. The next one is this bundle here. Now this, in this setup, it's red, gray, white, and black. This is going to be start, select, and guide. So it does come with its own ground lead, which is the black. And we'll be connecting that actually to the tournament lockout switch later. What you'll want to do for each of these is kind of the same method we used on that first wire, but we want to cut these right here with the toenail clipper. I'm only going to do one. Be very careful here. You don't want to cut into one of the jackets and have to repair it. Um, if you do, electrical tape is one option. Um, so there you go. Let's cut that. There we go. That's off. One more. All right. Then <laughs> I've used a. I would use a longer piece of straw, which I cut here. It's the same method. Just slide them in. Uh, if you have a smooth straw, that works great. I only have this, so that's what I'm working with, and that's fine. Try and get it in far as you can. And you know the rest. You'll just put slide in the sleeving on here, try and work it down. The, obviously these are shorter, so they'll go they should go fairly fast. Where's my white wire? There you are. And so on. So there it is. It's kind of poking out the other end already. We can just double it back and that'll be fine. All right. Try and get that white one in a little further. I don't want it pulling out. All right, so. And what, of course, did I mention that I totally forget is a piece of heat shrink tube. So remember to do that before you wire everything. Otherwise, it's real pain in to try and slide one on. It's not too bad with this, but uh, it's going to save you some headaches to do it first. All right, so that's how to sleeve wire. You can repeat that with some of the other harnesses we have. This L3 Arthi touchpad is a really good candidate for that because look it's all loose and ew don't like it um, however 
I had this tournament lockout harness from All Fight Sticks. Uh, it's because it's so thin, there's so many sections, I just don't feel like sleeping it that much. I didn't do it on my other build. But if you want to, if you have that harness, you can do that. It's up to you. All right, that's how to sleeve your wires. Hope that helps. Uh, clean up your wires, make them nice and neat and presentable. I'm sure there are other cool things you can do. Don't forget, you can use colored zip strips to kind of identify, hey, that's a start select bundle. This is a... L3, R3 bundle, that just put one on a both end and clip like I showed you, and you'll be set to go. Have fun!